I don't know if this disturbed you at all, but there were a few things that disturbed me as a Christian at this convention the past couple days. So I'm gonna talk about that, but I also think there's a warning here and something for the church. It's a warning, not from me, but from the scriptures. And if we're not careful, we will forget the warning through the scriptures that came through true prophets and apostles by the Holy Spirit of God. No new revelation, just one that's already written there, but needs to be called out as a warning and a reminder for the church today. So stay tuned. You may think that in the United States, maybe even in the world, that the red or the blue are going to save everybody and change everything. Don't get me wrong. I love living in this country. I love free speech. I love that we all have a choice to worship whatever we want to, religious freedom. A person isn't going to save you. A red or a blue is not going to save. We need to remember to not get so caught up in the things of this world because we desire to have whatever we want, if it's a freedom or if it's finances, because we have to first remember these things are all temporary. Even if a leader comes in and does everything that he or she promises, it's still all temporary. We're in a spiritual battle. Don't think that the red or the blue is on the side of the Lord, because we can lose sight of that too, because one side may look godly, but then you're quickly reminded that they're not. For example, when one side invites the Sikh person, a person who is uh, practicing Sikhism, to come and pray. I know the person was saying that, you know, praying to God and all that kind of stuff. But if you take a look at that religion, it isn't the same God. So Christians, I don't want you to be fooled when you hear anyone say, I pray to God, just because someone comes to you or, you know, even saying, I pray to God for you, it doesn't mean it's the same God. Because when you take a look at that religion and compare it to scripture, it is a different God. It is a different way to salvation. And it's not through Jesus Christ. It is a different view of our word of God and their scripture. For Christians, when you saw these headlines, it is a good reminder that if these leaders are inviting that kind of stuff in, we wouldn't want to participate in that particular kind of event because we don't pray to any other God. The reminder is to not get caught up in the things of this world, to know where your true allegiance should be lying. It says, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, and no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And you know, no, we're not military soldier kind of thing, but we're in a spiritual battle. And our commander that has enlisted us to be a light in the darkness. And if you want to know what that looks like, you're going to have to study the word of God, the scriptures, because that's how we're supposed to be living our lives. But we're not to get caught up in the things of this world. And we can, we can get so consumed with being saved and getting a new leader so we can keep this and that and the other thing, which things are important and we should stand for righteousness and everything. But let's not forget who our commander in chief truly is, the one that has enlisted us, that bought salvation, forgiveness of all sins through being the sacrifice, the perfect lamb on the cross, and that's Jesus. So we don't want to get caught up in the things of this world, constantly listening to political podcasts or watching the new, this news, get, or even getting caught up on how much money can I make, or just different things that they aren't bad in and of themselves. It's just be careful to not get so focused on all the things, whether it's getting a new leader you know, having changes in our country or getting the things that you desire in this world, that that becomes your goal. And then the focus is no longer on the Lord, seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness. 
going everywhere in the world, sharing the gospel and making disciples. Don't be so caught up in this world that you forget about his word, his instructions, the way we are to live in this world, and to even learn about him and what pleases him and what doesn't, to even learn about the future. It's okay to stand for righteousness. It's okay to be a light in the darkness, obeying the Lord. But if you get more into that and are trusting more in these things, then we have an issue here. The Lord has an issue with that. So let's just be reminded, all of us right now, that He is the one true living God. We should not be inviting pagan worship into our lives. So please don't get caught up in that. Even if a red or a blue says, I worship God, be discerning because if, if it's not the same true God that they're worshiping, then you don't want to participate in prayers like that. You don't want to get sucked into like, oh, they worship the same God. That's wonderful. I can partner with them. And it's like, no, you've got to keep that separate. They have their freedom to worship their whatever they're doing, religious freedom in this country. But us as followers of Christ, we have got to stand firm to the truth of the scriptures. He has so many good things ahead of us, and we won't need to be afraid. We need to just keep trusting in him. We're at Revelation 2.9, and I will give you the crown of life. Verse 11, he who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. These are just reminders to the church to help us to keep going, to not get caught up in this life here because he's coming back and he is going to be king of kings and lord of lords, but we've got to keep enduring. We can't go halfway. We got to go all the way with him until death and you get a crown of life. Proverbs tells us the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and good. Revelation 22 tells us, behold, I am coming quickly and... My reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. It does matter what you do in this world. It does matter that you follow the marching orders of the Lord. You need to get into his word. We don't need to be caught up in the things of this world, you know, getting all these different things. Don't make it your mission to get, you know, the right or the left, the red or the blue to save. Truly, Hearts are the thing that need to be changed. What the Lord can do with a person who comes before him, recognizes they are a sinner, and that there's nothing they can say or do to get right before God, except to take God's offer of all righteousness and all forgiveness because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, that perfect sacrifice. So instead of seeing us in our sin, he sees the blood that covers us, the righteousness of Christ. Let us stay true to him and his word. Endure, endure in the hardship. Don't get caught up in the things of this world, including the political world. Stay true to the Lord. Be a light that shines. Go out everywhere in the world and make disciples. Do good and not evil. And while you're doing that, all over God's word, he encourages because he knows what they have to deal with. Be strong and courageous.